Glenn Ferris. Good Tonight thing. is our guest is Stephen Baldwin and his wife Carrie and uh, their son Harrison. Yes. And the babysitter is with us and her <laughs> name's Mackenzie. I'd like to share with you. It is Live Well, Be Well Senior Expo on Wednesday, November the 7th from 9 to 1, Montgomery General Hospital is going to have a Senior Expo. Now this will consist of free health screenings, educational opportunities, governmental services, and there'll be different vendors there to talk about your needs. They're also trying to uh, come up with a, a, a cooking portion to show you how to cook healthy and live healthy. And uh, I just thought you may want to know, it is on Wednesday, November the 7th, 9 to 1 at Montgomery Hospital. Now for Dan's menu tonight, he has selected a tossed salad, pan-seared ribeye steaks, one of my favorites, a cala company cauliflower casserole, cornmeal parmesan crusted potato wedges, and peanut butter chiffon pie. Now the pan-seared ribeye steaks isn't going to take a lot of time, so I'm going to save those for last. The cauliflower casserole, not only do we have to cook it and mash the cauliflower, uh, we've got to bake it. So I would say all in all it's going to take about an hour. The cornmeal parmesan crusted potato wedges, you have to parboil the potatoes, then we are going to rinse them off in cold water otherwise you'll burn your hands, and then roll them in a cornmeal flour seasoning mixture and then bake those. But I think the thing we need to start on first is the peanut butter chiffon pie for the simple reason that we have to make it, then it has to chill and set up. So if you guys will give me a minute, I'll pull out all of our ingredients and the recipe for it, and we'll get started on it. I'll be right back. Narco, North American Rebuild Company, rebuilding the best. Your mine conditions are unique. If your shuttle cars, feeders, scoops, and continuous miners are standard models, Narco can probably make them more versatile and productive. Narco tailors OEM machines to specific mine conditions. We work with over 90% of America's top coal companies. We deliver quality machines with a 180-day warranty. We'll help install your machine and make certain it's working well from the start. When you need non-scheduled maintenance, you can call on Narco technicians for assistance. Narco's fully equipped machine shop is your insurance that every component meets standards. We've invested thousands in equipment and training and use only materials that will withstand the rigors of mining. We make the original more productive. Narco, North American Rebuild Company, rebuilding the best. Call us at 304 442 5656. Alright, we're ready to start our peanut butter chiffon pie, but before we do that, for the company cauliflower casserole, I have to parboil the cauliflower. So I put on a pan of water to boil. I'm going to add the cauliflower so it can parboil while we're making the peanut butter pie. I'll be right back. <music> Thank you. 
and welcome back. All right, for your peanut butter chiffon pie, the ingredients are very simple. It is not a difficult pie at all. You need one prepared graham cracker crust pie shell. And I did it this morning. I just followed the instructions on the back of the box of your ground graham, graham crackers, but make sure you bake it at 350 for 10 minutes until it starts turning golden brown and you can smell it throughout your kitchen. <clears throat> now for the chiffon pie filling, you need one eight ounce block of cream cheese at room temperature and one cup of confectioner sugar. Now I'm going to mix these up rather thoroughly. So let's just get that done. I will move that out of the way. Okay, so you have your mixture of cream cheese and confectioner's sugar at this particular time. Now I'm going to add one half cup of creamy peanut butter. Now if you go with chunky peanut butter, so you'll have chunks of peanuts throughout it, uh, I would go with maybe a tablespoon more. But anyway, I, I don't care for chunky peanut butter. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's a personal taste. Okay, so there we are. Now we're going to combine that. Okay. All right, let me scrape some of this off. I don't want to mess up with my measurements. Okay. Now, we are going to add one 16 ounce container of Cool Whip. Now, that's pretty difficult to find. So uh, Dan went shopping for me, bless his heart, and uh, uh, he bought me two eight ounce, which was good. Cause that'll give me 16 ounces. All right, now what I'm going to do is put two spoonfuls in, and then I'm going to mix it up. This product is called Cool Whip. It has been whipped and there is air in it. Now, if you beat it, the entire product with your mixer, it's going to go fairly flat and it's gonna be just a little bit more liquidy than, than what you want. Now, the first time I made this pie, uh, it didn't set up for me. And I called my mom and I said, now, <laughs> Granny, it just didn't work. And I said, it, it's not setting up. And we went over the recipe and I had it right. And I said, well, I even added more peanut butter to it. And she says, no, 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 you don't want to do that. And uh, 
I added more confectioner sugar and she said, Becky, that will just make it runnier. She said, what you have to do is add extra Cool Whip to it and that'll help it set up. So if you are making this and your pie does not set up, do not add extra peanut butter. Do not add extra confectioner sugar. But what you do do is add just a little bit more Cool Whip. And here we are, here is our pie filling just nice and airy as chiffony as can be so now we are going to put that in our pie shell then i am going to cover it and put it in the refrigerator but there's something i want to show you about that too all right now go around the outside first and work this towards your crust whoops let me turn this fire down Go all the way around it. Do the outside first, just like you would putting meringue on a pie or mashed potatoes on a shepherd's pie. Okay. Now, once you have the outside completely covered and no air holes, then go ahead and take what's left and put it in the middle. Let me get a better spatula here. Don't want to waste any of this, that's for sure. And don't smooth it down too much. You just don't want to flatten it at all. Here's better spatula. So here we are, one peanut butter chiffon pie. Now, when you get ready to serve this, I'm going to put a dollop of Cool Whip in the middle, and then I am going to melt some peanut butter in a sandwich bag, and I'm going to clip off the end, and then as soon as it's nice and runny, I'm going to zigzag on it, so it'll be a very pretty dessert. So now let me show you one more thing. Before you cover this, you are going to want to put five toothpicks in it, at least five. You can put as many as you want, but four doesn't cut it. Okay, so we have five toothpicks. Now I am going to get my handy wrap. Cover it. And when you cover your pies this way, your plastic will not fall on the surface of the pie. And when you take this off, you will not have a messed up pie service. surface. Okay, so there we are. Look at this. Just absolutely perfect. All right, now I'm going to put this on the refrigerator and... Uh, check on my cauliflower. I will be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's look at the recipe for our company cauliflower casserole. You need six cups of cauliflower florets. It needs to be peeled, it needs to be chunked, and parboil it to where it's almost soft. All right, one half cup of sour cream, four ounces of cream cheese, a quarter cup evaporated milk, and you use it as you need it, a quarter cup of butter, six green onions sliced, salt, pepper, and six strips of bacon that have been cooked, cooled, and crumbled, and then two-thirds cup of shredded cheddar cheese. All right, now, I started boiling the cauliflower when we started making our pie. Now you do not want to mix this with a mixer. You want there to be good sized chunks of cauliflower left, but you also want pieces of cauliflower in 
uh, the, the liquids. So now what I'm going to do is use a potato masher and mash this. That way the pieces will be small. I think you can buy bags like this, a uh, frozen, and they call it cauliflower rice. I may be wrong. I've never bought it, but it seems to me that's what it was when I went through the, the store. Now you want chunks left. Do not, and as I said, don't mash it with a beater. You can get one of these little handheld mashers at uh, the dollar store for a dollar and other places a little bit more expensive. And you can go to a professional store and get one that's metal that, that is very nice, that'll last you a lifetime. And uh, it just depends on what you want. Now look at this. See how I have it? I have got it to where it is just a little bit heavier than, than rice. Now, the fine grains will be mixing in with our liquids, and then I'll still have the large chunks so that everyone will know that it's cauliflower. So let's go ahead and mix in our ingredients, and then we're going to bake it. All right, we're going to save the cheese to last. All right, we need four ounces of cream cheese. Now, I'm, and now it's at room temperature, it's just that I turned the air conditioner on when I started baking this morning, so my room temperature wasn't very warm. All right, then sour cream. Now before we go any further, I am going to mix this up as much as I can. And uh, that cream cheese just needs to soften a little bit more. Okay, now we are going to add butter, and that's a quarter cup. Oh, I think that's too much butter because you can smell it, but we'll see when it bakes. All right, now we're going to do our salt and pepper. And I should have added that with the sour cream. So now I'm really going to have to mix it. Now I am going to add just a little bit of evaporated milk. Do not add any more than a quarter cup. You want this to be creamy. I would say that that's about like uh, a little bit more than an eighth of a cup, but it's not quite to a quarter. Okay, now it has that sauce in it that is your cream cheese and your sour cream. Okay, I am going to add bacon. Now on the bacon, I did not cook it till it was crisp. I prefer that my bacon be almost crisp so that the bacon will finish cooking and uh, as it does any oils, bacon grease I guess you might as well just say, will go ahead and bake in the casserole and I think it just gives it more flavor. If you want to avoid this, you can buy the jarred bacon bits. Some of them have real bacon bits on it. Or you can cook it until all of the grease is out, but you need to watch it carefully because it will, it, bacon will burn. Okay. All right, so this is nice. And all I have to do now is put it in a sprayed casserole dish. And I'm going to set uh, the timer for 35 minutes. Then I'm going to pull it out and put the cheddar cheese on it and then put it back in there for another 10 minutes, long enough for it to melt. 
and here we are guys one very nice company cauliflower casserole so let me put the lid on it whoops and here we go Well, are you ready to find out how to make cornbread parmesan crusted potato wedges? Okay, so what you need is a third a cup of cornmeal, and this is stone ground. And then I cut it with a third a cup of all-purpose flour because that's just what I do. All right, now we're going to mix this up first. If you're not dealing with a lot of potatoes, you could just do this in a paper plate. You can do it in a small bowl. Okay, so now we've got the cornbread. All right, I've got one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. So let's add it. Got it. Now, all right, you have got, I would say uh, it was a whole stick, half a cup of butter melted. And let's get a brush so we can spread this around. All right, so here we go. I am going to take your potato wedges and I have parboiled them. Hopefully I haven't parboiled them too long. And I am going to coat them with the cornbread and spice mixture. All right, now we're gonna add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Or more if you like it. Now we're going to mix it up, and then we are going to roll our potato wedges in it. Now you want grated. Shredded would work, but it's, you're going to have more cheese throughout your entire dredge if you use the grated versus the shredded. Okay, and here we are. Okay. Now you want your potato wedges to be wet because you want it to, your cornmeal flour seasonings, you want it to stick and, oh, I just broke that one. And they stick a lot better if it's wet than what it does if it's dry. I don't stop breaking these. Now, I really like potato wedges, but I have had very few where they were letter perfect. So I hope these are letter perfect. Sometimes mine are right on the spot, and every now and then they're either cooked too much or not cooked enough. You know, go figure. Now what we're going to do is put these in the oven and bake them along with the cauliflower casserole, but you're going to turn these once. Now uh, the recipe 
says to bake them for one hour, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn them after about 20, 25 minutes and cut the time down just a little bit. Okay. So if you guys want to go get you a cup of coffee and uh, take a little bit of a break while I do this, I will be back probably in about five minutes. I will see you later. Okay, now here are our potato wedges cornmeal crusted with Parmesan cheese and flour and seasonings laying in a pan of butter. Now I'm going to put them in the oven at 350 and I'm going to bake them for about 20 minutes then turn them over and bake them for 20 more minutes and then hopefully they'll be nice and crispy and golden and we can take them out and have some good eats. So let me get these in the oven and They'll be in there mm, five minutes. When I pull the cauliflower casserole out, I'll reset the timer for five minutes, and then their 20 minutes will be up. Okay, so let's see what all we've done now. Let me get my book. All right, tall salad I have ready. Pan seared ribeye steaks we still need to do cauliflower casserole, all but done. Cornmeal parmesan crusted potato wedges, they're bacon. Peanut butter chiffon pie in the refrigerator chilling. So all we have left is the pan seared ribeye steak. So let's go ahead and get everything out for that. and look at these um, ribeye steaks. Now ribeye steaks are famous for their marbling. Now these have been washed off, put in the refrigerator, and now I want to dry them off. I do not want any water or as little as possible to hit that pan because we want to sear these. Now when you're searing a steak, you want your pan as hot as possible and you are going to cook the surface until it is, now listen to that, 187. Now you have to do that whether your steak is medium or rare because 187 is the point at which most salmonella and E. coli is destroyed and that's what we are all about. Now, there we are. Now, let me wash my hands. All right, now you have your steak dried off so the moisture will not lower the temperature of the pan. As I said, the top and the bottom has got to be at least to 187. Now, before I turn it, then I am going to lightly salt and pepper it. And I'm also going to put some Montreal steak seasoning on it because I just like it. Mm. Now, I go light with it. I do not like my steak covered with this. Okay, now, I'm going to immediately turn it. And I am going to season the other side.
salt, pepper, and just a, a dash of steak seasoning. And there we are. Now, all you have to do is cook your steak according to whether they want it rare, medium, or well done, or any of the combinations. So, One more time and I am going to reduce the heat just a little bit. Now one stove top grill full of fantastic ribeyes. Don't those look good? All medium, medium rare. Okay, so now The last thing that we have to do is to put the cheese on our cauliflower casserole. So let me pull that out. We're going to put the cheese on it and then put it right back in. So let's get this out. Smells really nice. You can smell that bacon. All right, we're going to put on cheese. And we're going to give this about five more minutes. So, all we have to do now is take the potato wedges out, and we are finished for the day. So, I am going to go ahead and go meet Dan's guests in the living room, and I will see you guys in the dining room. Please do not forget about the Senior Expo at Montgomery General Hospital. It is on Wednesday, November the 7th from 9 to 1. And I hope to see you there. Bye, guys. Thanks for, thanks for visiting us. Well, Becky, what have you made up for us tonight? All right, we're doing a tossed salad. Okay. And this one's actually tossed. Last <laughs> week, we did a not tossed salad where yeah. I had all of the greens in the middle and then I had piles of vegetables all the way around it where you could pull in onions if you wanted, celery if you wanted, eggs if you yeah. wanted. It was a nice little salad. Okay, but we're and not doing that tonight. No, <laughs> <laughs> this one's tossed. Okay. And then we um, are going to be doing pan braised ribeye steaks. Okay, all right, okay. All right, then we're doing cornmeal Parmesan crusted potato wedges. Okay, mm -hmm. well that's a little different. I don't think I've ever had those. Well, I did the cornmeal and the flour because your mama always mixed cornmeal and flour for everything that she fixed, like fish or whatever. Right, right, right. And I thought, well, can't be, can't be Too bad. bad. So, that's okay. right. So hopefully and, it'll be okay. And then I have a company cauliflower casserole. Company. Mm-hmm. What kind of company? A log company? <laughs> all of us company. Oh, oh, okay. All right, I got and you. And it's like a twice baked potato, but only it's a, all the ingredients are twice baked plus a few more in cauliflower instead okay. of potato. I mean, after all, if you're going to eat potato wedges and, and a, a rich dessert, you need something vegetable that's a low carb. Okay, so mm -hmm. what? And is that it? Well, our dessert is going to be a peanut butter chiffon pie. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, well, 
And my mouth is watering. Let's, uh, let's have the salad, buddy. <laughs> okay, let's go get the salad. What do we got here for a salad? A toss salad. A toss salad. Okay, yes, well, let's enjoy just, it. Let's, oh, well, wait a minute. We're going to have say grace here. Okay. Uh, can you say grace for us, um, Stephen? I've just done a, that a few times. I'd be just happy a, to a do little, that if you want. A little um, uh, praising uh, God. Thank you. Sure thing. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this meal that's before us and for Becky's hands that have prepared it. And we give you thanks for the opportunity to sit together, break bread, make new friends, and give you thanks for the blessings of this life, O oh Lord. And we pray that you'd be with all those in our hearts and minds, especially those who have been ravaged by Florence down south. Uh, we pray that you would be with them during these difficult times and that we fi might find ways to um, be helpful to them in their recovery. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's uh, eat our salad. Okay. Bless you, Harrison. You're already eating all your mac and cheese. <laughs> Harrison gets mac and cheese, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That mac and cheese. Carrie, do you work or do you, are you a stay-at-home mom? I work. I plan events. That's you do I what? Do. I plan events for the Greenbrier. Oh, oh that's right. That's yes. right. I forgot so about that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wish I could stay with him all the time. Mm. He's a lot of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. That would be a very like difficult Ooh. job. Yes, it is. Do they limit it to one event a day, or could you have three or four different events at the same time? Oh, multiple events at the same time. How awful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is an adventure. It's a lot of fun. Well, Becky really knows is. all about those event planning things. She's done several weddings, about 20 at least a year for 20-some mm -hmm. years, so it's very difficult. Yes. You have a beautiful spot at the Glen Ferris Inn to do that. Well, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see the light? See the light? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's on. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Were you a stay at home mom, Becky? <laughs> um, no. No? <laughs> sort of. Um, until 78. Uh -huh. So I was a stay at home mom for my two oldest, and then I uh, went to work teaching. Mm -hmm. And I just stuck with it till I retired. I enjoyed it completely. What grade did you teach? Oh, when I was uh, working at Lookout, that's a little school in the Heiko area, I was mm -hmm. in fifth and sixth. Oh, right. And then I moved to Golly Bridge Middle, so it was sixth, seventh, and eighth. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to the high school, which is nine, ten, and eleven. And then I a, did a couple years at Bridge Valley, but I'm not a college teacher, I'm a high school teacher. Yeah. So. Yeah, and she taught uh, math, science, and physics. Oh my goodness. So uh, she's a math teacher. Well, you use both sides of your brain and then you're creative, mm -hmm. obviously, here. And then you worked in the sciences and math. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a compliment. Not many people can do that. You need help getting your salad ready? Okay. Well, Stephen, tell us a little more about yourself and uh, where you live and all that? Well, Carrie Harrison and I live down in Ronsford. Um, I'm a minister at Ronsford Presbyterian Church. And uh, we live... Presbyterian Church? That's right. I mm -hmm. see. And we live in the, the manse, the church house, right beside the church. I see. That's right. We've lived there 11 years now? Yes. 11 years now, yep. So I serve the church. Carrie works over at the hotel. And then I've recently started public service, too. Right, and um, I know that you've been down at the, the legislature at the, in the um, Senate there. And Two years, and it feels like 20. <laughs> I can imagine. It uh, gives you another perspective of life. I know as a minister you have certain things, and then when you go into public life it's a lot different. And it's very Ab difficult, I'm sure. Absolutely. But I really think they're, they're very similar. Public service and ministry. It's all about people, sure. trying to do your best to help people. I really approach public service like ministry, and I treat constituents like I treat somebody from a congregation who needs something. 
and I, I do my best to, to help them meet their need, whether it's what they state that it is or what the real need underneath is. And that's really the hard thing. Right. Trying to find out what's behind, what's the real need. Right. What's behind what you folks have to have are have a little about. bit of psychology and all that. So. Sure, sure. And when you sit down at the table with people, you, you really get to know each other. That's true. here now for us. Okay, ribeye steak, um, cornbread, parmesan, crusted potato wedges. Okay. That is certainly a mouthful. <laughs> and then the company cauliflower casserole. Okay, well it looks really good and I'm mm -hmm. just really ready to dive into it. So. All right, I'm going to okay. watch your expression. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> you do dishes. The pressure is on. Huh? <laughs> Okay, Harrison. See if you can taste some potatoes cheese. or something. There's some cheese. If it has cheese, he will eat it. He will eat it. <laughs> well, that's good. For sure. All right. I don't know where to start. That's always the question, right? You get a good meal before you. Yeah, well, you just go clockwise. I generally start at 6 o'clock and go clockwise. Do you? Okay. Mm -hmm. See, I look at and the And I take one bite of everything. Really? Every time? That's always your method? Mm -hmm. You just rotate around the plate? That's a good idea. Yeah, that's what I do. Potatoes are excellent. Well, thank you. I started with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit different, but um, I like them. We'll, well try good. this steak as well. I a lot of stone ground cornmeal. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Did you have to go to... I bought it at the um, mm -hmm. State Arts and Crafts Fair, and they were milling it right there. Mm. Oh, wow. Nope. Maybe not fair. It was the Arts and Crafts show at Ripley. I see. Mm -hmm. I took a bite of the cauliflower, and I liked it. And I thought, oh, what's that uh, taste? And then I found the bacon in there. No, there's a little bit of bacon. I should have yeah. asked you guys if you eat pork. Oh, oh. yeah. We do. <laughs> <laughs> It's very good, Becky. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I like the cauliflower. Andrea gave me this recipe. Becky, where did you learn to cook? Mm. Just by doing it over and over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the worst thing I ever did, my mother was out working outside and I wanted corn. And I went to the door and I said, I don't know, me, ma, I think that's what we called her, me, me, something like that. And I said, I want to make some corn. And I said, how do you do it? So she told me how to make cream corn. So I got the corn, the water, the butter, salt and pepper, no big deal. But I couldn't find the starch. And I went back outside and I said, me, me, I can't find the starch. And she says, well, it's in the box on the right in the upper cabinet. So I got it, fixed it, and I came outside and I said, why did it turn blue? Oh, I'd no. used laundry starch instead <laughs> of corn starch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when she started taking me in hand. <laughs> Actually, when, she, when we first got married, um, the only thing she could cook was fried chicken. So I've oh, taught her everything she all. knows. Yeah, Danny. <laughs> yes, I have. I was really <laughs> curious about that. I wondered, Dan, but do you ever do the cooking? Sometimes uh, I do uh, quite a bit of cooking at camp. Uh, she won't let me in this kitchen, but uh, <laughs> so I built one up at the camp, and then um, I do I, I do the camp meat for the for the guys and stuff. I do pretty good. So what's your specialty then, Dan? Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, well. I think I I, I do uh, deer deer steaks, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of stuff, and um, mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Well, you let us know when you're gonna cook that. And <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming back. Yeah. You want some mac and cheese? Oh, you want um, more? We don't have more of those. Mm. Well, Stephen, I have, um, I have a whole bunch more in the kitchen. <laughs> Tell us a little more about your uh, life and what all you're doing. And 
all that kind of stuff? Well, we chase around Harrison right now. That's, <laughs> that's one of the biggest things we do. Right. Yeah, and I bet your week's pretty full with church on Sunday and then go to the legislature and all those kind of things. And plus do all the, the work around the church that you have to do and go to the hospitals and visit people and all that. I'm sure you're very busy. Yes, sir. That's very true. But um, it's a blessing to have all those things to be able to do and hopefully be helpful. And this Sunday, Carrie had to work, so I had him with me in the morning, and I normally, you know, had to have some last-minute things I need to do to get ready for church. So Harrison was with me in the office, and um, he found my Sunday school lesson, and he threw it in the toilet. Oh, no. <laughs> oh man. And then... Well, only the people that he's, you know, supposed to do that. Yeah. Right, right. I'm supposed to listen to it first, and he's then throw it in the toilet. Back. Yeah. Thanks, dear. <laughs> <laughs> then we were having a meeting after church, so I had to print out the agendas, and he was so helpful. He went over to the printer, he pulled them out, and he brought them to me. And I thought, my goodness, this is wonderful. Well, then he wanted them back, and he ripped them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so my office, after about half an hour of this, was just a wreck. Um, we took a little picture together, and it was you know, I thought about, you know, well, things have not gone well. He's, he's messed up my Sunday school lesson and my meeting agendas in my office. But what a wonderful blessing to be able to spend the morning with him and um, have a good memory. So, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you something. Once a week, no more than once every two weeks, you all need to take 10 minutes out and sit down and think and write a little story about something he did that was just amazing. What have you prepared for our uh, dessert? This is a peanut butter chiffon pie. Okay. Charlie, be quiet. <laughs> the dog wants some. So oh, Charlie wants involved. to talk too. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> you okay, silly puppy. Well, let's uh, taste this. Uh... Oh, Harrison is all What did you call this? A peanut butter chiffon pie. Peanut butter chiffon pie. Is this like you made at the end? Harrison, just a about. Bite? Mm -hmm. You want a bite? You want a child bite? No. Oh, I just got some on his cheek there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very good. Okay, and I'll take a bite. Okay. I always wait to see if you fall over <laughs> before I take mine. That's very okay. comforting, Becky. <laughs> that is very comforting, isn't it? I like the swirls on the plate, too. That's quite decorative. Well, thank you. Yes. Boy, this is the sweetest thing I've ever tasted. Mm -hmm. Very good. It is sweet. Looks very good. Okay, I'm through. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> That's all. We all got quiet all of a sudden. That means it's really good. <laughs> no one can say anything. What do you think, Harrison? Says I like these gummy snacks. <laughs> well, Stephen, while you've got your mouth full there, uh, tell us a little more about uh, what's going on in your life and happening down at the legislature. Well, <clears throat> what's consuming right now at the legislature is this impeachment trial. Um, you know, the trials are set to start the beginning of October. Right now, there are four trials set and for October 1st, October 15th, October 29th and then November 13th. I see. So it is conceivable that we could be in trial from the beginning of October until the beginning of December. Oh my goodness. Yes, sir, and that is not where anybody wants to be right to now. Be, that's true, mm -hmm. that's true. And it's just, you know, it, it's an embarrassing situation for our state. It is. I hate that they're having to do that, and uh, hopefully it'll be over soon. <laughs> I hope our so. Local, uh, judge has just resigned and um, um, hopefully they'll be able to appoint a, a new judge here in Fayette County mm -hmm. and um, we're looking forward to how that's all going to shape up and, and pan out. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean judges are an important part of all their local communities. They sure are. They're, you know, they've been foundations of their communities 
for decades. And um, yeah, it's a big transition in the life of a community when that happens. So, um, uh, I think there's several people vying to get that position. I don't know who all they are yet, but it'll be interesting how that all shakes out. I heard Becky's going to be judge. Yeah, I, I oh, think yeah. she, could, <laughs> she, could, she could be a good judge. Yeah. Very good. No, she wouldn't. You know why? Because I always believe the last person I hear. <laughs> I and if, if it was a, a trial court, the prosecution always goes last. <laughs> Even though when the defense was up there, I believed every word he said. <laughs> and then the prosecution was up there, I believed every word they said. Right. I, uh, it's always, you know, their, their passion, their way with the words, their, their eye contact, their body language. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just sit there spellbound so I could never be a judge, <laughs> never. But a juror, you could. No, I, I shouldn't even be a juror. <laughs> I don't think you need to worry about professions, though. You obviously have one that you've been successful at in the past in teaching, well, and you're very successful in this one. Well, thank I, you, I Stephen. I can testify to that. <laughs> well, try to eat some more of your, your oh, pie. I'm enjoying it. Are you able to get some? Oh, yes, yeah. I've had some. Okay. Mm. Harrison's interested in Mackenzie, water. how is it? It's pretty good? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> Have you ever had one before? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very light. We always ask questions while your mouth's full. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's most convenient that way. Dan's, <laughs> Dan does it more often than I do. <laughs> but when you're eating, it's hard to find a moment where you don't have something in your mouth. Yeah. You're either opening to put it in or swallowing or chewing. Especially when it's so good, you don't want to stop eating it. Yeah. Well. What? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I, I just don't do well with a lot of really rich sweets. Uh -huh. it, you know, I just get nauseous from it, so. Well, it's very good. Three I, bites I like is the, all uh, I need. <laughs> Is there any peanut butter in this peanut butter? Yes, there is peanut butter, Danny. Okay. A half a cup. I see. It's very good. But I'm just giving you a hard time. Well, I was going to do like a one. raspberry, wild raspberry uh, deep dish cobbler, and then mm -hmm. I talked myself out of it because I thought Harrison would rather have peanut butter than <laughs> he would uh, have raspberries. Well, Sweet. I wonder, Becky, um, you do this every Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Just about. What are you doing next Tuesday? Um, <laughs> oh. We don't know the menu yet. We, well, I don't know what, well, yes, we do know the menu yet. We do? I'm doing bacon crusted uh, pork loin. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, we'll see Where, you on Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you take your bacon and you lay it out one on top of the other, and then you put all of your spices and seasonings on your pork loin and roll it up in the bacon and fasten it and then put a marinade on it and then bake it. Oh, wow. Well, we'll see. Sounds mm -hmm. like a lot of work. That was good. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to be a fan of bacon. We had a little bacon tonight. Yes, the, you did. Oh, wow, that was good. You're tweezing. Look at that. Well, what's your buzz here? You know, I thought it was so funny. Uh, when your secretary came to the cooking show, she brought her daughter, oh, and I had a twice baked cauliflower casserole, and you glanced over, and her mouth was just open, and out it was coming. <laughs> she didn't like it. No, she didn't like it. She made no bones about it. And then, uh, then he got sick on it, and I thought, oh, no. But I thought it was really good. Maybe you just have to develop a taste for it. It was delicious. Well, thank you. I didn't develop a taste for green beans until I was 16 or 17. Really? Every time my mom would fix them, she would say, you just need to take one bite, oh, just boy. one bite. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I was in high school, I decided they weren't so bad after all. <laughs> I'd, I'd never eaten a you salad yeah. until Carrie and I started dating. Oh, really? Oh, I was just, I ate meat and potatoes mm -hmm. and pizza. Boy. <laughs> right. and that was about it. And Carrie was just mortified by that. She said, you got to try it. 
<laughs> and she'll still, she'll stick things in the food that she knows I don't, I say I don't like, but that she thinks I will like and that I need to try. So she'll put vegetables and pasta that you know, I say I don't like. Uh -huh. and, and then she'll ask me, now how was that? Did you like that? And did you know that I put <laughs> such and such right. in it? Right. Mm -hmm. But my daughter, Andrea, she will make brownies with the kids with cauliflower that has been ran through a blender. I mean, all sorts of little things yeah. like that to get those vegetables in. I've seen a lot of people doing a cauliflower crusted like pizza. Mm -hmm. I tried that once. It's I horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not I, even nice. I made it, and oh my goodness, it, it awesome. needed help. It needed help. I'm now, sure I didn't do it right. Now, um, Danny's secretary, one of them, told me that her recipe for cauliflower pizza crust was just absolutely marvelous, and that she would bring it to me, but I've never. I never remember asking for it when well, I'm I there. I, I think I ate it before I got it here. Oh, so. <laughs> was, it, was it good? Yeah, yep. Uh, it's probably better than what I made, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, it's all in the recipe. Uh, it's yeah. just that simple. It's all I in agree, the recipe. I had a bad recipe.